Greetings tourists and welcome to another video. So uh, at the time of this recording, YCS Vancouver uh, has already begun or is about to begin. Uh, that will be our second YCS uh, for this season, for this series. Um, today I kind of wanted to cover um, the second place uh, YCS list uh, from, the, from Brazil, the Vanquish Soul deck. As, uh, if you saw like my Vanquish Soul list earlier this week, uh, at the time of that recording, this deck list was still not like available to us. Um, but now it is. And I kind of wanted to share a few thoughts on it because uh, this build is a little different from mine. And not only that, uh, there are some main and side deck choices that are kind of unorthodox for me. Uh, and kind of like I wouldn't say I completely disagree with the approach I just would say uh, it is kind of an orthodox and it is some things that I probably wouldn't do despite this list ending up being successful at this event um, but without further ado uh, let's begin so on his list he has um, uh, one thing that he has that I don't is Fenrir and Riseheart. Um, if you've been following this channel and you've seen my past Vanquish Soul videos, um, you already know that if there is an engine or is that card that conflicts with Fenrir, I probably would not play it alongside Fenrir. Uh, I did mention in my last Vanquish Soul list that if you are playing the Super Heavy Samurais, uh, Fenrir would be ideal fit would be a really good fit uh, for the deck uh, as a whole so I don't disagree with Fenrir being here however we also see Bestial Magnamut um, and people already have made the debate in the past where whether or not you should pair Fenrir with Magnamut because they the two could conflict with each other uh, if you are forced to do like Magnamut earlier than just someone even the Fenrir uh, a good counter argument or a fair counter argument to that is that you can spend the you know, summon the Fenrir because it is level 7 and you do have a scale 8. Uh, so you can end up pendulum summoning it. Um, however, I'd say if you are going to be playing base deals in your list, like I am, um, I wouldn't say Fenrir is an incorrect approach, but you do have to be wary of that. Uh, deck building contention when you are doing uh, this kind of choice um, something else that he's doing uh, like he's playing the second copy of Big Ben K um, I think on his video he said uh, at least on his profile he brought up that uh, he didn't test with this engine enough and he kind of just thought about it on the spot and uh, or like one of his partners thought it on the spot and he just didn't want to break with uh, not being able to resolve with Kaoshi. Um, I still am not a fan of this because yes, I I do agree that Wakaoshi, uh, like if you draw the Big Bang K, you pretty much have like three dead cards in your hand or deck that won't be able to resolve properly. However, um, I don't think the extra copy warrants you like missing out on the brick um he he brought up on his deck profile that he drew both of them out more than at least on one occasion and that's just the the deck uh punishing you for like playing uh an ortho unorthodox uh amount of an extra copies of a brick it's pretty much like the same debate you see with uh vision hero increase in the hero deck like you don't want to see that card ever in your hand but if you do uh and you see multiples uh you're just going to get super punished for it i don't think the super heavy samurai engine is like important enough to warrant this extra copy uh, another thing that we see is we see durandal uh durandal does make sense with the fact that you are playing fenrir and you are playing wakaoshi uh, you have pretty much a lot of free summons that warrant the activation of this card and at the end of the day it's just another copy of Rosin. Um, 
my stance against this card is that you already have a monster in your extra deck that kind of does the same thing and your only target for this is rosin so if you end up like drawing the rosin you can you can say that rice heart is another target for this or this but nine times out of ten you're searching this off front rear you're not going to search this off the other cards because this card really doesn't do anything without friend rear um so i'm not really the biggest fan of durando i'd say like because let's say for example you already opened the rosin yes this can grab you another rosin that you can use like for for example his attribute effect or like other instances but um i'd rather just play another card that could fulfill a similar function to Durandal when it's not uh, as crucial needing extenders for it than a card like Durandal would. Um, another thing that uh, I see is the draw in the main. Um, I understand like the power behind draw. I just feel like draw is better to be sighted in this type of deck than in the main because this is one attribute that you're missing that could have been an attribute that would have helped with your strategy uh, like for example like in my build of Vanguish Hall I am maining Kurikara and I am maining Dogaran and the main reason for that is it, despite these being going second cards um, like strictly going second cards, they are fire attribute, so they aid with the activation of Stake Your Soul, they aid with the activation of all your Vanquish effects, um, so on and so forth. So like at least uh, main deck wise, I think Droll is not the best choice. Like I do understand the fact that it kind of skips the turn for a couple of decks. Uh, but however, I do think that there are better choices and you can just keep this in the side. Um, I don't like that he's only playing Magnemuth as his only bestial. I think Druid's Worm is a really, really strong like uh, choice at the moment. Like, not only does this like significantly help you against the Unchained matchup, but uh, this card is just a really, really sticky card to 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 bring out to the field. It makes Magnemuts add a lot more potent because uh, if we take away this, the only search target for Magnemut is Caesar, and you already have ways to keep uh, Caesar already. So why not just have another search target for Magnamut that pretty much fulfills the same condition and is just as strong as as effective um i guess the last thing we can talk about in, at least regarding the main deck is that he is main, main in tisibu i do wholeheartedly understand that tisibu is really strong this format like there are a couple of decks that are being played like in top tier contention that actually do fold to this card like purely unchained labyrinth um just to name like a few outliers um however i feel like this format is kind of diverse and do playing this in the main deck gives you three risks one not being able to like go first while flipping this card, two, not facing the right matchup for this card, and three, um, like pretty much, um, it's pretty much like uh, drawing this like a very awkward time, or not just or not opening this at all, or have a conflict with your samurai engine. So. This is another one of those cards that I would keep in the side deck. Um, but yeah, that's it for the main deck, at least like opinions wise. Um, 
so in the side deck we see shifter, dogoran, bell, krikara, nib, cosmic, and barrier. Outside of dimension shifter, I am playing all of these cards in some capacity, either in my main or in my side. So these are not incorrect choices at all. Uh, as you already know, my list is main decking these cards. Um, I am also main decking the ghost bell. So uh, I'd say that this is not incorrect. However, uh, them sharing the attributes for their vanquish effects kind of gives it like more value than Droll and Lockbird. At least, uh, like, on, on my opinion. One other card that, like, not many people play, but uh, I would, like, ponder on, like, at least in the side deck, would be Contact C and Retaliating C. I think, um, I think those cards are, like, very 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 strong like we're slowly creeping into a format where pretty much these cards are just like very very strong catalysts uh, for certain strategies like for example against like the Chimera uh, branded deck I guess purely against like Manadium this is a really uh, good card to think about against purely again uh, Kashtira um, Unchained is another example now uh, this one could be beneficial uh, like this is something I would highly highly consider and there are and there earth monsters so that's something to take note of. Um, another card um, that I think is a really strong potential side for this kind of deck, especially since you're playing Magnemot, would be uh, Phantasmi. I think Phantasmi is a really strong choice if decks like Unchained are going to be like part of the meta. It's a dark attribute, it fixes your hand. Uh, it pairs well with Magnamort. It's level 7, so you can Pendulum Summon it. Um, so, let me share my sh thoughts on Shifter, because if you notice my deck profiles, I haven't been playing Shifter, despite how good Vanquish Soul plays into, uh, with it. Um, the number one reason I don't play Shifter is because I feel that with the Super Heavy Samurai engine, you want to play, you want that engine to be as most optimal as possible. So instead of just relying on a card that is probably going to conflict with my engine a bit, I just rather it be like another hand trap that could be just as impactful. Um, the benefits of playing shifter is that you don't have to play like many other uh like hand traps uh because this and this does have the lingering effect also it being a dark attribute uh really helps you a lot against certain matchups it just wins you the game also another really cool thing about shifter is that with the super heavy samurai engine it makes it so you can activate your spell and traps um without any issues of like conflicting with the engine because they would get banished instead of being in the graveyard um but yeah um the one ghost bell seems odd to me especially since there is no small world in this list um if small world was in this deck like in some capacity I would feel a lot better about some of these choices because uh, they could serve as bridges for other cards like for example you can bridge the motorbike into like the Dolgoran into Rosin just to give you an example 
uh, they, these chair 1200 defense and this and this chairs being fire um, but yeah uh, I think those are like my closing thoughts uh, I'm not playing Saratobi nor Psychic and Punisher I think these cards are fine I think Punisher is a strange one uh, I do understand that it works with Fenrir plus Wakaoshi but like there are not many tuners in this deck so you kind of want your synchro spots to be like the more optimal ones and probably use uh, the other uh, side deck spots for, st for stuff like in your extra deck like if we look at the main deck right now uh, and we look at the extra deck like there are no outs to Baguska turn one if they summon that on you another card that I completely forgot about that is not in this list and it's another thing I don't like about it is uh, Dust Devil is not in here we only see continue as the only spell card and the issue and the issue I have with that is that we're in a format where utility cards that serve as wolf or monsters are kind of ideal like if you don't play dust devil you're going to lose game one to baguska you're going to lose game one to a uh, monster immune chaos angel you're going to lose game one to like certain other cards so yeah Forgive the noise in the background, I really can't do anything about that. Um, I think this is like concluding like the end of this discussion. Uh, but yeah, uh, I hope that you found this informative or it helps you with your deck building. Good luck to everyone playing at Vancouver. I look forward to what we see from the next YCS. And yeah, keep practicing and keep building.